Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of my Power to Paint series. Today we're in my gallery and we're going to talk about reworking backgrounds. Now about three weeks ago, I posted a video on how to paint a downy woodpecker. It looked, oddly enough, a lot like that. Anyways, I've, it sat around for about a week, two weeks, I decided, no, it didn't have enough punch in the background, so I reworked it. As a second note, I've had a lot of requests to show more airbrush. Well, 10 to 15 years ago, I used a lot of airbrush in my work. Now I don't use a lot at all. In fact, I use it as little as possible. But I think I can make everybody happy today. Today, we're going to learn how to punch up a background by just using a simple airbrush. Now, if you have any questions about what you see in this video, post them right down there, and I'll be happy to reply to them as soon as possible. And as always, don't forget to like it, share it, and subscribe to me. So let's get into the studio and learn how to do this by airbrush. All right, so for your listening pleasure, I've decided to uh, narrate this with voiceovers because if I turn the music up, so I thought you might like a little better if I narrated this one instead of listening to my 80s hard rock and my compressor going nuts. So the first thing I'm going to do is, see this palette here? I will be using only these five colors. So every time I switch color, I'll show you which one I'm using in the palette, and you'll know what I'm doing. So why don't we get started with our first color? All right, so here's our first color, which is just a mixture of titanium white and a little bit of ultramarine blue. And what I do is I just start randomly making little kind of odd shaped dots. I don't want circles, but just random shapes. You know, when you get that out of focused camera look, well, that's what I'm shooting for here. So I'll just take this uh, mixture of titanium white and ultramarine blue and just start making some uh, random patterns to start with. So I'm actually using a uh, Posh AB right here. They don't make them anymore. They've been discontinued, but you know us old dogs. We use what we know and what we like. And uh, this mask was just created while going over to the uh, photocopier and making a exact size 100% photocopy and cutting it out and that'll just uh, keep me from over spraying onto uh, my foreground bird and, and uh, perch and the key to airbrush is to having a nice liquidy flow so whether you're using the AB with a cup here or you're using a traditional airbrush that has a, a cup on the side or a gravity feed at the top you want to water your uh, mixture of paint down to about um, I'd say a not quite watery consistency, but somewhere between a milky consistency and a watery. If you have it too runny, it sprays out too quickly and just pools on your board. And if you have it too thick, it doesn't like to come out at all. Now the other uh, point I want to point out here is, you notice that my hand is always moving. Never keep your hand still when you're airbrushing, because again, you'll just get the paint to pool in that area and it'll give you nothing but problems. So keep that hand moving. So again, all I'm doing, I'm starting out with this, uh, this uh, bluey white color, just creating random blotches of color to make that diffused look in the background. And uh, once I lay this down, we'll move into some more warmer colors. <laughs> So here's some of that warmth I was promising you, and this color is made up from the uh, base color that we used in the 
uh, original downy video which is um, a lot of cadmium yellow medium and uh, some titanium white but then to warm it up we've added in some raw sienna and uh, some burnt sienna to give it a little of a orangey red glow and this color is what will really punch up and bring some more life to this background especially vibrating off of the uh, complementary greens that are in there with the reddish tinges okay so again just keep airbrushing it in with a nice flow always keep my uh, hand moving don't ever stop in one's place or a pool you can actually see up here I actually stopped in a pool a little bit so I'm gonna have to cover that up as we go on So here's our third color, and this is just some straight red out of the tube, vivid lime green. And then I think I put a touch of titanium and white uh, in it just to take off a little bit of the edge, not much. can actually see that I'm blending that green in over where I already uh, laid the, the warmer uh, siennas earlier and that's another key to airbrush the nice thing about airbrush is it's very easy to blend your colors into each other to get that soft diffused look It'd be very hard to get that with a brush So this deeper darker color it's just taking the uh, base yellow and adding a little bit of hooker's green a little cobalt blue and a little chrome oxide green into it just to make it a little uh, deeper darker value and by applying this deeper darker value I'm actually going to make my lights my yellows and greens more vibrant because I'm introducing that contrast okay so on this side I'm still trying to make those random circle-ish shapes they're not really circles but random circular shapes anyways but I'm using negative painting which means I'm spraying to the outside of the circle and uh, by doing that the shape that's left inside is is creates a circular shape so it's just standard negative negative painting and the other thing I wanted to point out was as I move to the left hand side here it's a lot lighter so I actually added a little bit of the base yellow into that darker green so that it's not as intense stuff I used the straight out dark that I used on the right hand side it would be too intense and it'd be too much of a value change and it would jump off the board so uh, even though you're airbrushing it's still like painting by hand is you have to tint your colors and soften them where they need to be softened and darken them where they need to be darkened so that you get nice subtle transitions
So as you might have surmised for yourself by now, Airbrush is a very overlapping type of medium. It, uh, it's a great way to get subtle gradations from one color into another. And there's a lot of overspraying. So right now I have that base yellow out and I'm just going over areas that I already airbrushed that I felt were a little too intense just to soften them off and blend them back into that background. Remember, all I'm trying to do here is create a little bit of, an, uh, of a punched up background, not a background that's going to draw too much attention. I just want a soft patterned background to create some interest and not to overwhelm. So here I'm trying to make a little bit of a glow. So I'm kind of making hot spots in the middle of some of my, my shapes. Now, even though I'm making hot spots, watch my hand. Do you see that it's still moving? I'm making a circular hot spot in the center of some of these circular shapes, but my hand is still always moving. Because if I don't keep my hand moving, it's going to pool. And I suggest for anybody who's new to an airbrush, before you try any kind of airbrush on a piece of artwork, you try to uh, airbrush on the side for something and just keep the airbrush in one, one area and keep the pressure going and see what happens. And you'll, you'll know what I mean about pooling and it just destroys a piece. So even when you're doing hot spots, your hand is still doing a small circular motion and it's keeping the airbrush moving so you don't pool closer in here we can see a lot more detail a lot more of the spray coming out of the uh, the airbrush Here I uh, load up a little more of the vivid lime green and I'm going around the edges of where I just sprayed the white and you see how it kind of creates a bit of a glow. By putting down a base of a white and then over spraying it with a vibrant color, you really create a, 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 a glowing look to the paint. Okay, and that's a old, 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 old painter's trick is to lay down a base of white and then bring a very vivid, vivid, uh, intense color over top of it to create a nice glowy look.
So here I'm working with the uh, base yellow color again and you can see that I'm going back over the uh, colors that I've laid with that base working myself back to that base color and it just blends everything in and makes it soft because I know I'm sounding like a broken record but you know can't say it too many times the softer you are the better you are. What I'm trying to do here is just create a little bit of punch in a background, not create any kind of emphasis on the background, okay? So don't have harsh shapes. If they feel like they're too harsh, overspray them with your, your base color, which in this instance is the yellow. So at this point I felt that there was way too much visual weight on this side so one of the advantages of working on a hardboard is being able to go to the table saw and just cutting off a thin sliver which created a, uh, 
a little less balance to this side because I liked the dynamic of this bird coming around. I want a little more tension, like he's about to take off anytime, and that allows me to work up these uh, uh, reeds or uh, grass strands of grass a little bit more and create uh, the weight I needed to uh, balance this off. All right, so as I bring this puppy home, cleaning up all my overspray, let's go over the key rules to airbrushing. Number one, the big kahuna, the one you need to really remember. Always keep your hand moving. Don't ever rest in one space or your paint will pool and just make a mess. So that's, that's the, uh, if you will, cardinal rule of airbrush. Always keep the hand moving. Two build up in layers. It's no different than if you're painting with a brush. You always want to build up in nice, thin, clean layers. All right. And the last rule is always lay down a nice, clean uh, white and then rim around it with a very vibrant color to make that glowing look. Okay. If you follow those three things, you'll have a very successful airbrush experience. Now, if you've never used an airbrush before, I would suggest that you uh, uh, practice on a tester. I wouldn't go to a live board right away. Uh, what I used to do in college is photocopy a piece and then airbrush onto that, okay? And it's a good way for uh, testing your airbrush skills and honing your airbrush skills, if you will. And always make airbrush a subtle thing. Never make it hard edges, always clean edges. So here was the original uh, painting and here is with airbrush enhanced. As you can see, the airbrush created a nice subtle background, didn't draw too much attention, wasn't too hard, and just enhanced it a little bit. And that's exactly what we were after. So there you go. There's a simple way to rework a background. The whole process took me about 25 minutes to do in total, maybe half an hour. So it's a quick way, an easy way, and a clean way to enhance a background quickly. So once again, if you have any questions about what you saw today, don't hesitate to leave me a post down there. I'll reply to it as soon as possible. And don't forget to like it, share it, and subscribe to it. See you next time.